Young Show. Hello? Have you ever wondered how you'd react if suddenly one of your pet daydreams turned into a reality? Susan Parker, in our story tonight, runs a gift shop in a small town. Good morning. Oh, good morning. I'm the carpenter. Mr. Riddle talked to you about me. Oh, yes. Come in. Come in. How do you do? I'm Susan Parker. I'm terribly sorry. I would greet you by name, but <laughs> to tell you the truth, I haven't mastered it yet. I am called Boleslav Sablinsky. Oh, dear. Boleslav Sablinsky. Boleslav Sablinsky. Look, would you mind terribly if I just called you Bo? Bo? Yes. If you like. <laughs> well, it's not a matter of if I like, it's a matter of necessity. Gosh, you really don't look like a Bo at all. You know, you, you, you have the most important looking head. Would you let me draw you sometime? Draw me? Yes. Well, I, I draw illustrations for children's books. Would you sit for me sometime? Mr. Riddle said it was shelves you wanted. Oh, yes, I do. But first, let me get you a cup of tea, huh? Thank you, no. There's a great deal of work waiting in my shop to be finished. Oh. All right. I, uh, I just got the shipment of toys in, and I want a nice place to display them. Now, I thought some shelves right there, maybe three or four of them. I don't want anything fancy, you know, just the shelves. Just, um, uh, shelves, shelves. You know? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, why? It's very pretty music. <laughs> it's beautiful workmanship, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I have not seen anything like this since I was a boy. Oh, you, you German? I am an American citizen. I was born in Poland. When I first came to America, I, I went to Chicago. I'm new here. Oh, welcome. I think you're going to like it here. Thank you. You were saying about the shelves. Mm -hmm. Well, you're the carpenter. <laughs> Give me your ideas now. What do you think? Earn your two bits. I'm afraid it will cost a great deal more than 25 cents, madame. Mm, well, not too great a deal, will you? I'm just a poor widow. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> so am I. I'm not a very good carpenter. Mr. Riddle told me you did beautiful work. He's very nice. I'm learning. Well. What'd you do before? Before? Mm, in Chicago. First I dug ditches, then I worked with a gardener. Now I'm becoming a carpenter. Mm-hmm. And what'd you do in Poland? I had no trade. Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. I am thinking. Oh. Well, now, that's a very rare thing these days. You go right ahead. When I was a boy in the nursery, we had an arrangement for the toys. I think it would do very nicely for you. Oh? We could put the shelves here in the middle of the room, so you could walk around them about this wide, with an edge that way the toys would not fall off. I like that. That's a very good idea. And beautiful designs covering the boards. It's a very pleasant sight. Yes, I'm sure it is. A and if it'll save me any money, I'll uh, help you paint the... whatever you're going to make. Very well. The designs are crude, but very effective. I remember them clearly. There is a farmhouse, a nice little farmer, and his big, angry wife running after him with a rolling pin. And the cross-eyed pig. How I love that pig. 
Now, how about some tea? Thank you. I'd like it very much. Good. How do you take it? Plain, if you please. Plain it is. Here we are. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Why don't you sit down, relax, enjoy it? All right, Master, come on over here. Take a look at this. Now, does she remind you of your own love? Yes. Good. Now my heart reacts. <laughs> I must say she's awful cute. And I just love it. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. Yes. Really does take you back to your old nursery, doesn't it? That is pretty far back, but yes, it does. That was a beautiful house, mm. with magnificent gardens. But that is all gone now. Oh, no, it isn't. Not really, not if you remember it. You can keep things alive for yourself, you know, if you want to. Do you keep your husband alive for you? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, not in a morbid sense. Oh, no, indeed. You see, our time together was wonderful. And I remember it with, with pleasure, not sorrow. You have had tragedy in your life, yet you seem happy all the time. Well, now, you know, there's a little trick to that. You can wake up every morning and decide whether you're going to be happy or unhappy. I always decide today I'm going to be happy. That's a good trick. Oh, sure. But if you dig deep enough, you can always find something to be happy about. Living in this wonderful country, you cannot imagine how difficult a day can be. But that's all past. This is your country now. But I think you've sacrificed too much to get here and not to enjoy it. You are right. Thank you. I like being right. As the song goes, relax and let yourself go. Yeah, relax and be happy. That's right. I thought I'd forgotten how. But I find to my delight that I have not. Good, I'm glad. Well, the job is done. Yes, and a mighty good job it is, too. I will say good night. Thank you for dinner. It was delicious. <laughs> oh, I'm a wizard with hot dogs. Good night, Boleslav. Very good. Yeah, it ought to be. I've been working on it all day. You know, somehow or other, Bo just doesn't suit you at all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh, hello, Paula. Uh, this is Susan Parker. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope you're not all booked up for tonight. Now, oh, hi. Be right with you. Well, I, I have two tickets for the little theater production, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, I made some posters for them, they gave them to me. <laughs> Oh, no. Well, tonight's the last night. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, all right. Have a good time. Goodbye. I will go with you. What? That is, if you cannot find a friend to escort you, I will be very happy to go with you. Oh, well, there are a few people I should ask first. Fine. And if they cannot go, I will go with you. I love the theater. My mother used to take us all over Europe to the different theaters. Paris, Vienna, London. I remember a Shakespeare festival at Stratford-on-Avon. <laughs> I'm afraid the local interpretation of Shakespeare is going to be a far cry from Stratford. It has been so long since I've seen anything make-believe. I'm sure I could not help but enjoy myself mm. and your company. Well, thank you. I will come back at a quarter to eight. And if you are free, it will make me very happy. Au revoir, madame. Do you have a title? 
There were titles, yes. Are you a prince? I was in line for princehood. But that was a long time ago. Well, may I tell you something? Mr. Boleslav Sablinski. It still shows. Good afternoon, madame. Good afternoon, your Highness. Shall we go? Your other friends could not attend. Well, I didn't call anyone else. The theater is right across the park. If we hurry, we can get to the seat. I think it was truly marvelous. <laughs> well, they've got nerve. I'll say that for them. They'll try anything. Absolutely anything. Of course, everything was not perfect. No, I should say not. Oh, thank you. Especially when Lady Capulet's dress rolled up with a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> that we did not have at Strat for the neighbor. No, I imagine you didn't. Well, good night. Do you have any coffee? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I used the last drop this morning. Oh. But there's always tea. Anything, so long that we won't have to say good night just now. <laughs> Come in. See my little rat's nest. Looks like I ought to tell fortunes back here, doesn't it? I think it's charming. Thank you. Sit down. Do you tell fortunes? Well, uh, I'm afraid not. I'm quite good at reading the tea leaves. Oh? My governess, who said she was a gypsy, taught me. Forest line. Very good. May I tell you that I admire you tremendously? Oh? How can that be? Well, must be horrible to lose the world you know and love and have to start all over again in one completely alien. You lost your world. I lost one person. You lost everything. If you are lucky, one person can be everything. I, uh, I started to say that I, uh, I admire your courage. Prince one day, ditch digger the next, carpenter the next, and all with your head up. They are all honest professions. <laughs> you know, you just won't let me compliment you, will you? I'm sorry. It has been so long since I've had the occasion to receive a compliment. I think I'm out of practice. Well... I thank you for the thought and for warming up the tired blood in my veins. Oh, goodness sake, you make me sound like a tonic. Pardon? Uh, nothing. It was just a bad joke. Now is it that we'll not receive the compliment? Perhaps we're both just a little out of practice. May I? Oh, yes, thank you. What is it? Is it I? Well, yes. Partly you. It, it, it just struck me how dreams come true. <laughs> you know, when I was a little girl, I used to dream about meeting a prince on a beautiful white horse. <laughs> but who could have guessed that he'd turn up with graying hair driving a 1930 pickup truck? It is 1946, paid for, and in excellent condition. Oh, oh, please don't be angry. The idea just tickled me, that's all. I wonder... I wonder how many of our dreams do come true. But change to the point where we don't recognize they have come true. In essence. Oh. You are a dream, Susan. A dream that I did not even think to wish for. With you, I am alive again. 
I am alive and I did not even know I was dead. You take your plane, don't you? Thank you for remembering. Hardly finished your tea, I mean. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. But I'm so full with pleasure, I cannot take any more. Will I see you tomorrow? Well, I don't know. Will you? We will go walking. Come at five. After the walk, I'll cook dinner. Good night, Kochana. Does that mean something good? Yes. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow at five. Right. I can find my way out. All right. Good night. Good morning, Susan. Oh, good morning, Miss Partridge. There. What can I do for you? I need some scratch pads for the kitchen. Certainly. <laughs> How did your Polish friend like to play last night? Oh, very much. Did you know that his wife can hardly speak a word of English? No, I didn't. These are, uh, 20 cents each. I'll take three. Can't even put a simple sentence together. They rent a guest house from a friend of Irma Wills. Irma says that she never sticks her nose out the door. Shall I charge these, Miss Parker? Uh, yes, dear. Fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. What's the matter? You hardly know the man. Good afternoon. Do you mind if we browse? Not at all. Come right in and make yourselves at home. Thank you. Come on in, Edgar. Madge, we should be back at the end. It's five o'clock. Oh, but I want to look at those cute little music boxes over here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Something is wrong. Mr. Sablinsky, I, I think you should have told me you're married. I know this. But at first it, it was of no importance. Then its importance became far out of proportion to the fact. I'm not sure what you mean by all that. The fact is that, well, you are married, and this is of the greatest importance to me. Of course, I knew you would feel that way. That is why I did not want to tell you so soon. I wanted you to trust me more. To trust you? Yes, so that I could explain to you my situation. Look, I'm sorry. You, you really don't have to explain anything to me. And there's certainly no excuse for my being rude with you. So forgive me, please. I'm sorry. Perhaps you, you just don't understand. Uh, this is a small town, and I'm in business here. And, well, uh, one's reputation is important. Reputation? Yes. We, we, we went to the theater together, and you walked me home, and, well, that's all there was to it. Do you care only what other people think? Uh, excuse me. Would you like some tea? Why, how nice. Thank you. Please, Susan, listen to me. Goodbye, Mr. Sablinski. 
If you will just mail me a bill for the shelves, I'll see to it that you get your check right away. Please, there are circumstances I would like to explain. Excuse me. Uh, there you are. Oh, thank you so and much. And you, sir? Well, I've never had tea in a store before. Well, there's a local <laughs> custom around here. That's very nice. Aren't the music boxes beautiful? Oh, they're adorable. They're imported from Germany. Oh, oh, they're about uh, uh, twenty-seven fifty. Good evening. Good evening. May I speak to you? I won't take but a moment. Very well. May I come in? No, I'm sorry. I, I'm working. And you said it would just take a moment. All right. It will be difficult for you to understand my problems. The problems of all those in my troubled country who wish to leave have not been yours, thank God. I was fortunate to have friends in America. My friends in Chicago were especially helpful. They're very wealthy. In many cases, money was the key to our prisons. It was arranged for me to leave, and I could bring my wife also, if I had a wife. But I was not married. Wanda and I worked in the resistance together. We were great friends. I married her so she could escape also. But you're, you're, you're still together. In a strange country, we have had great need of each other. I admire and respect her. With us, it could have been love. Oh, my goodness, who knows? We hardly know each other. I know. And you know, in here. No, no. It will stay there. When I left here this afternoon, I thought our situation was not hopeless. I thought it could be changed. But when I looked into her eyes, I saw so much hurt there already. I knew I could not add to it. You said I had sacrificed too much already to come here, not to enjoy it. I will do for her what you have done for me. I am no longer a dead man walking down a hill, one foot dragging after the other. I see where I am going. I enjoy the walk. Wanda and I have come a long way together. We will go on together, but it will be better now. Well, thank you very much for letting me know all this. It makes it my dream even better. Why is that? My prince. Gray hair, pickup truck, and married. I'm sorry. Oh, no, not at all. No, the only essential is that he be noble. And he was. We will be friends? Oh, of course. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye. Circumstances are sometimes beyond our control, but our conduct is always in our own power. Well, good night, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>